Our Father, once again, we want to bless your name for our coming together here. We thank you, Lord, for this conference. And we are praying that as you have brought us here, and we know you are calling us into a special ministry, as well as a special relationship with you. We are praying that every one of us will respond and will do what you want us to do in Jesus' name. We know that the time is short. And these are special times in which we are living. And we pray, oh Lord, the call that comes to us even today, you will help us to respond appropriately in Jesus' name. Lead us, Lord. Teach us. And guide us in your way. And we pray that you will so put everything we need within us, that your fire will burn within, will be set on fire for the Lord, and will do your work in Jesus' name. Speak to every heart now. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. In our teachers' uh, conference, the first meeting in the morning will be combined. That means the primary school section, children church section, together with the secondary school youth section, will be having the first meeting together like we're doing this morning. And then after this uh, message, there will be breakfast. After breakfast, we'll divide. The secondary will be apart, and the primary section will be apart. Then in the evening, for the last message, the revival hour time will come back together again. So the meeting or the combined uh, message we're having now is titled Moses Upbringing for the nation's deliverance. Moses Upbringing for the nation's deliverance. We're looking at Exodus chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took a wife of the daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, he hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bull rushes, and dubbed it with slime, and with pitch, and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flax by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off, to which to know what will be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him. And said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter saw, said unto her, Take this child away, and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and she, he became her son. And he, she called his name Moses and she said because 
I drew him out of the water. Then we have the simple story of the beginning of the life of Moses. The man that became the great deliverer of the nation of Israel. And although this is a well-known story, and it's something you must have read before, or you would have heard before, you will see that there is so much that time will fail us to be able to glean out of the story that I've read to you now concerning the upbringing of Moses, that little, fragile, weak child at that time. And yet the upbringing eventually produced a leader, a lawgiver, a deliverer, a preacher, a minister, a servant of the Lord. That tells us then that we may not know how far-reaching will be the effect of what we're doing today. But if we will do it faithfully, you will see that the people you are leading to the Lord, the little children you are working with, you are raising them up to become people that will deliver nations in the future. Now, as we look at this uh, story, let me just remind you of the things that happened at that time. Please uh, retain in your mind that Moses became one of the great characters in the whole Bible. That is, bring together all the people, all the personalities, all the characters you find in the whole Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, you'll find that Moses stands as one of the very great ones among them. If you think about the Old Testament alone, you must have to accept that with uh, different uh, yardsticks and measuring rods, we'll count Moses as the very greatest of the Old Testament personalities but you know he was born in a difficult period of time note that down and if you are writing put it down that Moses was born in a difficult period of time generally when we face difficulty in a nation we do not take the work of the Lord seriously we feel that while well, this is a difficult time, can anything good come out of a difficult period? Oh yes, it was a difficult time. And the children of Israel were like in slavery. And Pharaoh oppressed them. And life wasn't saved. And if you talk of infant mortality, that is children dying not just by disease but because of the edict of cruelty that was the time that even at such a time of insecurity a time when the lives of children were not very very precious a time when <clears throat> the law in the nation did not defend the lives of children Moses was born let us realize then that at this time in our country and in many countries in Africa, it's a difficult time. Families do not have enough to eat and the suffering comes upon children. And of course, many children, both male and female, they die prematurely. And yet, at such a time like this, we are called to bring of little children in the way of the Lord you may not know it may be at this difficult time it may be at this time when many citizens in many African countries are slaves in their own nation and the economy is down and human rights in many nations 
is uh, really very low. It may be at this time, like at the time of the children of Israel in Egypt, that you are bringing up a particular child or particular children, and these children are actually being prepared to be deliverers and servants of the Lord. Number two, the nation was uh, in a hopeless condition. That is, the nation of Israel. Now what I mean by that, different from point number one, is that the nation of Israel at that time did not know that that nation will ever be able to continue as a nation. They were thinking, and in fact that was the plan of Egypt, that the boys will be killed, only the girls will be left alive, so that eventually those girls, as they grew up, will marry to the Egyptians. And with that kind of system, you will blot out the nation of Israel as a unit, as an entity, as a separate nation. And so, it was a nation that was in a hopeless condition, and it appeared the nation had no future. And at such a time, Moses was born. Look at the time in which we are. There are some nations in Africa right now that uh, the majority of the citizens there are wondering whether that nation will be able to continue, whether that nation will be able to remain as a nation. And yet, at such a time like this, children are being born. And these little children... And these toddlers, and these uh, infants, and these adolescents, we're taking care of them. And some of us are even wondering, is it of any use? Is there any future for the nation? Is there any future for these children? Why are we wasting so much time thinking that at this time we're ministering to children? Remember that Moses was born at such a time. And some people had to take care of uh, this Moses and prepare him when the nation appeared to be in a hopeless condition. Number three, there was spiritual darkness and physical suffering. At this time, you will find that there was no systematic worship of God among those Israelites in Egypt. Uh, because uh, the thing that concerned them was the burden that they were bearing. And because they were under such great heavy load burden, who will be thinking about a systematic way of worshipping the Lord? There was spiritual darkness. Look around you. And you'll find that in your nation, no matter which nation you come from, you'll find that there is spiritual darkness. There is occultism in the villages. There is idolatry in the village and in the town. And there is a fetish idol worship, juju making, everywhere, whether big city or small village. And it's a time of spiritual darkness. And in very many churches, uh, the light of the gospel is not shining very very bright there is confusion as to how to serve god there is confusion as to the commandments of the lord in fact there there are places where people act as if there were no law and you see at the time before moses was born there was no law because it was moses that came and eventually the law was given to him to give it to the nation you know you are ministering at such a time when it may appear that all around you is spiritual darkness and you feel you are all alone in your community among those children taking care of them bringing spiritual light unto them not only that physical suffering sometimes these children as they come to church maybe on sunday and uh, you want to minister to them one, they don't even have Bibles in their hand. And you say, tell daddy, tell mommy to buy a Bible for you. And uh, the child says, but we don't even have money to eat. I'm not taking breakfast this morning. I came here with empty stomach. 
and the clothes are torn and the child is untidy and you can see suffering written on the faces of the children and you say is there any use should we even bother ourselves talking about spiritual things these children need more than gospel you are right but that was a condition at the time of moses when he was born and yet some people were committed to bringing up that moses and he became a lawgiver a deliverer a redeemer a savior so to say in uh, number four the parents had faith to keep him for some time and after that they had to now throw him out because there was no way they could keep him again can i remind you that as, as you look at various families today there are some parents they endure for some time and they keep their little children but the time comes they talk to these children and they say children you see the condition in which we are we have no money to take care of you go to the streets go and fend for yourself go and find whatever you may get so that you may still remain alive if they don't throw them out it may be that the father will one day look at those children inside him he will pity them and that father walks away to come back no more into the house because he doesn't have anything to feed them and he feels that instead of just looking at them and they're suffering and he, there's nothing he could do what he will do is, is to walk away and so you find that this thing happened to moses they kept him for some time when they could not keep him again because of the condition of the land the mother made a little boat of bulrushes and dubbed it with mortar and then put him by the riverside number five abandoned that moses was eventually abandoned the mother wasn't there there was a sister far away looking at him to see what will eventually become of the child are there not many children today you who teach in primary schools you will see those children there is a sign of abandonment on the faces of some of those children they are not being taken care of in fact uh, their parents uh, don't even live together and their parents don't take care of them and even though they know that their father they have mother there is no relationship proper link between those uh, parents and those children abandoned children and do you know that even some churches some churches are not taking responsibility their parents will bring them on sunday morning and it appears that uh, they just abandoned them there in the children's church and you are wondering what kind of thing is this and some of you you are likely to get angry and you are likely to say am i the one that gave back to these children how is how are these mothers doing like this and they just came here dumped the children there abandoned them here i too i am going to the adult church i too i want to enjoy the service i too i want to enjoy the message i too i want to enjoy the good music in the adult church don't do that moses was abandoned like that but you know it was that abandoned child that eventually became the great deliverer of his nation israel number six now you would have uh, noticed that um, in uh, taking care of children you will notice that women feature very much and uh, you've been wondering why and in fact there are some times when the women who take care of the children either in the children's church or they are teaching in the primary school or they are teaching in the secondary school there are times when those women will begin to complain and uh, they will say these men all they know is how to bring children into the world after that they don't know anything about bringing them up can i tell you something here i read the passage to you already 
And you see what I find out in the upbringing of uh, Moses. I see three men, three women in particular involved. And I see another woman, another uh, maid involved making four of them. Number one, the mother that gave birth to him. The mother that saw him as a goodly child. The mother that kept that child for three months. The mother that made the boat of ball rushes and put the child in. The mother that put that child by the brink of the riverside, not into the middle of the sea, in, by the brink of the riverside. The mother that got the child later uh, through the providence of God to raise up that child and to train that child. You find that number one woman, the mother. Then we find second pharaoh's daughter a woman again and you see pharaoh's daughter came to the riverside and saw that little boat and said what's in that boat and then sent her maid that makes number three woman and that girl the maid of pharaoh's daughter went to take that child and when that child was taken the child began to cry and then comes in another woman miriam the sister of Moses and said should I go and find somebody for you an Hebrew woman that will take care of the child and Pharaoh's daughter said yes all in between those women the mother Pharaoh's daughter the maid of Pharaoh's daughter and the sister Miriam the sister of Moses do you see then that God uses women and although women may not be like a Billy Graham on the limelight, on the pulpit, standing up there and preaching on crusades, yet those women and you women, you have an important job to do in raising up, in bringing up deliverers for nations. And uh, so it's very important that we will take our place. And we will realize that the ministry of women is very, very important in taking care of these little ones. Number seven, the early training and permanent influence on the life of Moses. That early training and permanent influence, permanent effect, permanent impact on the life of Moses. The same thing with us. All these children we are bringing up, it's not in vain. We should realize, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Therefore, realize you are working in the primary school, you are working in the children's church, you are working in the secondary school, you are working in the youth ministry. You are bringing these infants and these adolescents, you are bringing them to know the Lord. You are spending your time on them. And you are imparting everything you have to them. Realize it's not in vain. It is going to yield fruit. Because the training, the upbringing of Moses had a permanent effect, influence, impact upon that child. Very briefly, let us consider three points. Number one, faith in the God of children. Well, it's faith in God. But you see, faith in God is general. I know many people that have faith in God, but they do not have faith in the God of children. They do not believe that these little, weak, fragile bodies can become anything. They do not believe that these sickly child, these child that has nothing no knowledge no understanding no strength weak and fragile like a little plant that can easily be led into crying that can easily be discouraged that can easily be crushed by the circumstances of life they do not believe in the god of that child that the god of this little child the god of this little infant as a plan for this little life a purpose for this little life a project for this little life 
and therefore you will find the people that do not have faith in the God of these little children in fact they act as if the God of heaven has nothing to do with these children they feel that the God of heaven is not interested in these little children they feel that if you are really going to have ministry you should go into the adult section because after all what are you going to get and what is God even going to reward you with if all you are doing is being involved with these little fragile things that we call children and the unstable um, ado um, adolescents and therefore you see we're talking about faith in the God of children now when I say faith in the God of children I am now making particular reference to God the God of heaven the God of the universe as the God of the children in particular let me show you why I, I make him the particular God of the children look at it in Jeremiah chapter 1 Jeremiah chapter 1 reading from verse 4 then the word of the Lord came unto me saying before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee I set thee apart and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations you see that God is the God of the infant is the God of the little child is the God of that weakling is the God of that little baby is the God of that little one that you are supposed to take care of it says before I formed thee I formed thee I am responsible for your existence I am responsible for your creation you see many people think that God created Adam and Eve after that time he is not involved anymore in forming in creating in bringing to the earth little children they feel that god was only responsible to bring adam and eve into this world but the rest of humanity god is no more responsible god says i'm responsible every little life every little child every weak child every sickly child everyone that comes into this world and you look at that little thing as if that little thing will not live i am responsible and before i formed this one in the belly i knew him and before he came forth before he was even born before the mother saw the face before the people around rejoiced that a child had been born i knew him before he came out of the womb in fact i searched him apart don't you know many of these little children you see you don't know their future you don't know what god has in plan in store for them and he said before you even became you came out not to talk of when you grew up i already ordained you and already set you apart to be a prophet to the nations now you need to have faith in the god's that prepares those little children for a future ministry now if you remember the case of uh, john the baptist the same thing god is the god of the little children and if you have faith in this god you will have faith in his plan you'll have faith in his purpose you'll have faith in the future of the children and every time you minister to a little child you will be looking beyond that little child and looking to the god of the children and you see i'm doing this because of the faith i have in the god of children now in particular you see the parents of moses they had faith in the god that brought moses to life look at hebrews chapter 11 hebrews chapter 11 reading from verse 23 by faith moses when he was born was hid three months by his parents because they saw he was a proper child 
and that and they were not afraid of the king's commandments they risked they risked their lives because of that child to preserve that child because they had faith they looked at that child they saw something special they saw that this will not be an ordinary child this is a proper child born at an improper time proper child born at a difficult time a proper child born when there was an edict of killing male boys and yet they saw him a proper child born when they themselves were under slavery the yoke of slavery they saw him a proper child they were looking with the eyes of faith if you do not look at the children with the eyes of faith and you do not see how god sees them and see on them the plan of god for their lives and see in them the future that god has for them bound up with their little lives you will not be able to take care of them you'll be complaining all the time now if you were told now that you you just got a letter from the presidency in your own country whichever country you are coming from and you have this special letter saying leave your teaching job leave whatever other job you are doing you are invited specially to the presidency and the president has learned about you and you will be taking care of him and whatever is right we can't tell you about any salary now we'll be paying you later oh you say salary or no salary if i'm working in the state house and i'm going to be taking care of the president i'm going to be taking care of the king i'm going to be taking care of the ruler and the leader of a nation even the fact that my name will go on record that mrs so-and-so mr so-and-so took care of the president what do i need salary for just let me have food i will eat the privilege the honor to take care of mr president that is enough for me well the problem is that little moses there abandoned without any care who knows that that one is greater than president who knew that that moses will take care not only of uh, the not only of the nation israel who knew that he will manifest supernatural power in egypt who knew that all the nations around will hear the name of that man and fear that man who knew that that man will get a law from god and he will give that law to the nation of israel who knew that as a result of the law that moses will get from god all the nations of the world will take that law and develop the judiciary their system of a law from the law that was given to moses who knew that the name of that man will go from the beginning from exodus until malachi who knew that when you come to the new testament matthew uh, mark luke and john you'll still have the mention of the name of moses who knew that the church will not be able to preach uh, one week without one day somehow mentioning the name of moses who knew that even when you read the book of revelation you will be talking about moses who knew that on the mount of transfiguration of jesus there elijah will be there and moses will be there who knew that even when you get to heaven you will learn a song when you get there it will be the song of moses who knew that just to take care of that little child that's greater than being called to the presidency state house and take care of a president you take care of a little child you are taking care of a king you are taking care of a president you are taking care of a lawgiver you are taking care of a deliverer you are taking care of somebody that will nourish a whole nation that's why it's so very important you have faith in the god of the children it is your faith in the god of these children that will make you know that although this little child he appears weak he appears fragile he appears has not been able to do anything yet in the future this is going to be a wonderful child i pray god will help you god will open your eyes 
that the work we are doing with children is the greatest work you can ever do. If anybody calls you and said, why don't you do this other thing? Why don't you do this other thing? It's like if you are working in the presidency in the state house and you are taking care of the uh, president and then somebody came and said, I have another job for you. Will you take it? You say, don't even worry to describe that work to me. I don't care what that work is. The work I am doing is enough. My name is on record already that I'm taking care of the president. I don't care for any other job. That's it. When you are taking care of those little children, you are doing something that you should not exchange for any other thing on earth. In um, Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Reading from verse 2. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Do you see then how important this work is? Taking care of children, bringing them up in the way of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Yes, it's so important. That's why you are warned in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Reading from verse 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my father which is in heaven don't despise the little children don't despise the privilege and the opportunity of serving them and the opportunity of training them of bringing them up children in the primary school if that's where you are what a great privilege you have and the children in the secondary school if that's what you are doing, what a great privilege, a great task you have. Have faith in the God of the children. In the God who plans for the children. In the God who formed the children. In the God who set them apart one by one to a specific purpose, a specific thing in life. Let me go to point number two. The father's extraordinary care through leaders of children the father's extraordinary care through leaders of children i read to you already exodus chapter 2 and we're going to go over again that exodus chapter 2 and we're going to see how god took care of moses through Pharaoh's daughter, Miriam, as well as the mother of Moses. Although it's those women we saw in action, yet God walked through everything because God had a plan for Moses, just like he had a plan for Jeremiah. And God has a plan for every child. And those children that are in your care, those children you have to bring up, you have to teach, you have to lead, you have to counsel, you have to train, those children have plans that God has made for them. How did God take care of them? Through these leaders or through these instruments that God used. Let's look at it now from Exodus chapter 2 verse 2 and the woman conceived and bare a son and when she saw him that he was a goodly child she hid him three months I've read to you Hebrews chapter 11 verse 23 and you will see that uh, the parents of Moses by faith they looked at him by faith and because of the faith they heard they saw something that the natural eyes 
would not have been able to see. What's the first thing we learn as we talk about bringing up a child in the way of the Lord? This is number one, seeing through God's eyes. Seeing through God's eyes. That's a difficulty we have. If you saw through the eyes of God, you take care of that little Moses more than you are doing now. Obviously, Anna must have seen through the eyes of God. And she saw in that little child Samuel, a prophet for the nation. No wonder she took care of that Samuel the way she took care of him. Seeing through God's eyes. And the Jeremiah will find, which I've read to you already, that God said, I formed that child. I sanctified, separated that child. I set apart that child. I ordained that child a prophet to the nation. If the people around him at that time had known, they'll take care of him more than they had done. You see then, every child, you come to a class, and you see some little children, and a child may misbehave. Don't you know? Even Moses later misbehaved. At the age of 40, he killed an, Egypt, an Egyptian. Even then, with whatever you may see on that little child, don't just look at that act, that action of that day alone. Look with the eyes of God. See what God is seeing. Look the way God is looking. And seeing this child, something beyond the action of today. Something beyond the death of him of, of today. Something uh, beyond the tattered clothes that he's wearing today. See through God's eyes and see right into the future. That's how to start you to take care of a little child. Now, point number, number two. That's in verse three. And when she could not, she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and that deed was lying, and with pitch, and put the child therein, and uh, she laid it in the flax by the rivers of the brink. We don't have time to go into all the details, but you see here, number two, heavenly wisdom. Heavenly wisdom. What are we going to do with this child, Moses? Because the child is now about three months of age. The crime will attract the attention of the Egyptians. And if uh, they know that the child has been born, they will rush in. If they see that this child is a baby boy, they will take the child from the mother and throw to River Nile and kill that child. And because they couldn't keep that child at home anymore, what were they not going to do? Heavenly wisdom. He didn't just uh, throw the child anywhere. Why did she think of the riverside to keep the child? Heavenly wisdom. Why was it it was at the very spot where Pharaoh's daughter will come to take her bath? She had kept the child. Heavenly wisdom. Why did she go to hide that child at a time when Pharaoh's daughter had not arrived there? Heavenly wisdom. Why didn't the mother stay there to identify herself as the mother of the child? Heavenly wisdom. Why did she station Miriam, the Moses' sister, to stay far away in a hidden place watching that child? Heavenly wisdom. If you are going to bring up a child, you need heavenly wisdom. Because you see, there are circumstances that will come up in that life's child. As we're training that child, bringing up that child, that something will happen, you get to a dead end of the road. You get to a point on the road, you say, what will I do now? How will I continue now? What else will I do? And at that time, in bringing up that little child, in training that little child, you need heavenly wisdom. And that's what we need if we're training children. And if we're taking care of the little ones. If we're taking care of those ones in the secondary school, heavenly wisdom. Number three. Do you see here? 
resourcefulness. We're talking about a woman. They didn't have all the money in the world to go to the shop and go and buy a ready-made boat. But the woman was resourceful and she saw all those little plants, the ball rushes by the side of the river, and she took a little knife and cut them and weaved them into a little boat. Not only that, and it took slime and rubbed it all so that water will not be able to get in so that that little child will not be drowned. Resourcefulness. You are working with children. The children, they like to see pictures. Oh, you see, our leader in our church will not give us money to go into the shops and go and buy the pictures of Jesus and go and buy uh, the pictures of Bi that tell Bible stories. Be resourceful. If you're going to teach little children, you'll be very, very resourceful. Resourcefulness is one of the qualities that you need in bringing, taking care of those children and leading those children in the way of the Lord. You will see what you can do with your hand. And you will see what you can do with watercolor. You will see what you can do with crayon. You'll see what you can do with a flannel board. You'll see what you can do just putting the pictures there. You will see what you can do with a, a ready-made kind of a dramatization of the Bible story. Uh, you call the children there. Uh, you are resourceful. And you say, you are going to act the, uh, uh, the part of this one, the part of this one, the part of this one. You read the Bible story to them. And then you say, which one will you be? Which one will you be? Which one will you be? And within about 30 minutes, they act out the story. And that little class will be able to understand what you are revealing unto them. Be resourceful. Resourceful. And there are times when uh, you read a story and uh, you feel the children, do they understand or not? Then you begin to say, okay, on this story we have read, we're going to divide this class into two. Now you class, uh, you know, go to this side and this one go to this side. And you say, we have read this story now. You, this group, group one, you are going to be the questioners. You will be asking questions on the story that you have read. And this uh, side, you will be giving the answers. You say, now we are going to any question from that passage. And this child will raise up his hand and ask the other group a question. And then you say, this group, when you fail to respond, it means that this group has won. And then we'll close it there, and this group now will start to be questioning. This group will start again to be questioning while they are asking questions. They will read the story. Like this one I read to you this morning now. If you read it in the class, you divide the class into two. You say now, you this group, group A, group 1, ask questions from group B, group 2. And then they begin to say, uh, you know, in asking the question, where was Moses born? And then this group may answer, it was land of Egypt. Who was the king at that time? And then they may say Pharaoh. Who gave birth to, the, to Moses? What's the name? They may not find the name here. They may search other places. And then if this uh, side does not know, all right now, this side you have won. You asked a question from that passage. This group was not able to answer. All right, you now ask your own question. Because they defeated them now, this one said, what's the name of the mother of Moses? And we didn't know you defeated us. So this group will ask them back, what's the name of the father of Moses? And then this other side too, they will, you know, they will be confused. They too, they will not know, so this side as one. We we'll come back to this group again by asking questions like that. The children will understand the passage. Because they themselves, they have to read it now, understand it, before they can ask those questions. You will be resourceful. You will find things to do with those children, the class will be alive. The discussion will make those children to really know the things you are reading about in the Word of God. At other times, you will tell them to bring out lessons. If you were Moses at this time, Think about what your condition will be. Mommy has put you in that little boat on the side of the river and uh, she has gone away. And uh, where will you eat? Because, you know, there is no food there now. You begin to talk about everything. And those little children, the story will come alive unto them. Number three, 
in training children and uh, in bringing up children, we need resourcefulness. Number four, we need love. Love. You see, it was love that made uh, this mother to go into all the trouble, make that little boat and dub it with slime, pitch it and then put it by, the, by that side. So then, it's very, very important that we must have love, sacrificial love. You take care of those children, you will love them, you will appreciate them, you believe in the God who formed them, who created them, you know they have a very good future. Every time you see them, something tells you that this one is going to be great. This one is going to really serve the Lord. Whatever that little child is doing now, whatever the kind of misbehavior you see now, you look with the eyes of the Lord and you love that child extremely. Number five, vigilance. You see that in verse four. And his sister stood afar off to which to know what will be done to him. You see that there was vigilance. They didn't just abandon that child at the riverside watching over that child. If we are teaching a class, while you are teaching the whole class, you are looking at them. You will not be looking down. You need to have eye contact with the children when you are teaching them. That's part of the vigilance. Somebody is trying to pass something, is going to pinch uh, the other fellow, is trying to disturb, you just set your eyes on that fellow. And when your eyes are in contact together, it checks that child. They know that you are vigilant. You are not an absent-minded teacher. You know some teachers, you are teaching something now, and then you started telling a story. And after you started telling the story, you miss the train of thoughts. What you were saying before, you miss it out, you jump on another thing, and you are not able to get back to where you were before. That's not good. If you are teaching children and young people, you must be vigilant. You also look at their lives. You are vigilant on them. Their behavior, their character, their Christian experiences. There is the need to be vigilant. Of course, you need to be vigilant on yourself too. So that you do not do anything that will hinder their learning. Number six, compassion. You have that in verse six. And uh, when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe waved, and she had compassion on him, and uh, said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. You will be sympathetic. These little children, they have some little, little things that pain them. Some little problems that bother them. Some things that confuse them. Some situations at home, some situations in their lives that bring conflict, sorrow, sadness into their lives. Maybe they cry like Moses cried here and you will have compassion. You will have compassion. You will identify with the problem, with the suffering so that you will be able to manifest compassion unto them. Number seven, we find in verse seven. And then said uh, his sister, to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. Before I tell you what happened here, I want you to notice something. Already, Pharaoh's daughter had said, this is one of the Hebrews' uh, children. That he is an Hebrew would have given birth to this. Miriam came out immediately. And Miriam didn't say, Oh yes, you are right. Can I tell you the story? Can I tell you why we put this child here? In fact, I am the sister. We have the same father and mother. No, you need wisdom. I told you that before. But then, this uh, woman, Pharaoh's daughter, had said, This is an Hebrew child. So, Miriam said, You are right. Who can take care of Hebrew child more than Hebrew woman? That's language problem. That is, this is 
a child of the Hebrews, having the culture of the Hebrews, having the, who will have the language of the Hebrews, who will know how to take care of this child more than an Hebrew woman. That means, number seven now, our teaching must be appropriate. Appropriate teaching. And you see, we, we need to be able to tailor our teaching to the children that we're teaching. If uh, you know that a child is very young, tailor your message, tailor your approach, tailor your storytelling, tailor your uh, presentation to the age of that child. We don't teach a child of four or five the way we will teach a child of ten or eleven. You will tailor what you are doing to the level of understanding and to the background and to the educational level of that child you are speaking to. And that's what Miriam realized here and said, you have just confessed that this is a Hebrew child. I need to then get your Hebrew mother, Hebrew woman, to be able to take care of this child. Not only that, Miriam went and called the mother. Why? Is there a trick there? No, not at all. The mother, apart from being the mother, she has just given birth to Moses. And therefore, in her body, she had milk. And this little Moses needed that milk. Who am I going to call that will take care of this child? Am I just going to call any Hebrew woman that has not just delivered, that doesn't have milk, the natural milk, to be able to give to the child? No, Miriam was more reasonable than that. He said, okay, this little baby needs somebody to take care of her, and I need to go and call somebody that has milk, that will give to the child. You know what we're saying here? You must make appropriate people. To bring up the children, the people that have the milk of the word of God. Not bone, not meat, but the milk of the word of God. So Miriam said, I'm going to call somebody appropriate for the task. Not only that, Miriam knew that there could be other women too in the land at that time that could have milk. After all, there were women that could give birth to female children. And they wouldn't touch those female children. And those mothers will have milk also. And Miriam could have called any of them, but no. But why did she go to call the mother in particular? You know why? The mother has that natural love for this child. You call somebody to help these children, the people that have natural love for them. They just love the children. Not the people who are forcing and pushing and dragging, go to the children's church, uh, help these children, help that one. No, they have the natural love. That's how the mother was very much appropriate. And so you will see here, appropriate teaching, appropriate people, the right kind of people to be able to help the children and the young ones. Number eight, paying the price. You know, if we're going to really take care of children and we're going to take care of the youth, we need to pay the price in bringing them up. Now, verse 9, And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Pharaoh's daughter was willing to pay the price. She didn't know everything in the future. That, will, that this child will do but the joy of rescuing a baby from drowning the joy of rescuing a young life from perishing she said I'll pay the price I'll pay the price take care of this child it's a um, sacrificial kind of giving if we're going to take care of young people youths we have a price to pay it may be you pay the price in time. You give time. It may be that you pay the price in studying. You study. It may be that you pay the price in enduring. Enduring whatever you will find in situations with those little children. Pay the price. 
and you'll find that it will yield eventually. Point number three now. The fruit of Moses' upbringing. You know this already. The fruit of Moses' upbringing. In uh, chapter 3 and verse 10. Chapter 3, verse 10. Come now, therefore. That's the Lord talking to Moses at an older age now. And I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. He became a deliverer. That's the fruit. The training will bear fruit if we keep on and endure and do it till the very end. And so we can find the fruit here. Moses became a deliverer. Not only that, he became a miracle worker. He was the one that God used to silence all those magicians of Egypt. We need somebody today in this our nation that will silence the perpetrators of false religions. Who you say who can do it? Well, take care of those little children. The Lord will use them and they will bring glory to God in this nation in Jesus' name. We need people today who will preach the gospel. Moses became a preacher. Take care of those little children. You are taking care of preachers. And we need people today who will bring law and order into every nation in Africa. It was Moses that brought law and order to the nation of Israel and even to nations around. And how, how could he do that if he had not been brought up but the way he was brought up? Therefore, make a commitment to the Lord. We know this thing is going to be a fruit. I'm so happy that we are here today. And we're in this conference and we have the children, the young ones in this nation and the nations of Africa uh, to take care of. Only that I wish that would have had more of the other nations represented here. So that we'll have enough teachers, enough children church workers, enough youth leaders, enough people all over this continent. And we know that if we can take care and bring up and train the little children only in a few years time, all the nations of this continent of Africa will be delivered in Jesus' name. Are we willing to do it? I said, are we willing to do it? Are we willing to commit ourselves to it, not looking back anymore? The Lord will help you. The Lord will grant you the grace. All the qualities of life, all the qualities of ministry, all the anointing, all the wisdom, all the love we need, the Lord will give to every one of us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I, wholly available. I will serve the Lord in this capacity. The children of the world are waiting for you. The children in the villages are waiting for you. The children in the schools are waiting for you. The children in the communities are waiting for you. Rise up to the task. There is an abandoned Moses there in your village. Pick up that Moses. Take care of that Moses. You may be given a president to the nation. You may be given a deliverer to the nation. You may be given a professor to the nation. You may be given a medical doctor to the nation. You may be given a leader, a ruler, a guide, a counselor to the nation. Take care of those children. Take care of those children. See them with the eyes of God. See those children with the eyes of God. Pray for heavenly wisdom. Pray to be resourceful. Pray for love. The love of a mother. The love of a father. The love that flows naturally. The love that is never tired. The love that never complains. The love that doesn't get angry at them. The love that is the love that is not irritated at their actions. Pray for each. That you will love these young people. That you will love these young people. You will not be driving them away from church. You'll be drawing them to the Lord. Pray that you'll be vigilant. Pray that you'll be compassionate. And pray that you'll give appropriate teaching. 
in the appropriate language at the appropriate level in the appropriate manner to those young people that we are teaching and training and be willing to pay the price pay the price pay the price do whatever it requires so that the work will be done pray and give yourself to the Lord if you see with the eyes of God there will be no complaint there will be no memory are you willing to pay any price to get the job done are you willing to endure willing to suffer with those children and for those children God has a plan for them move along with God <clears throat> That the plan of God for the children will be realized. Pray and surrender. Yield yourself to the Lord. Let the Lord renew your strength in this great time.